the work of service has been uh, recently uh, extended to hopefully make it more usable for various uh, tasks. Uh, it was added to Yorla's office this morning in uh, the end of 2005. So it's been around for quite some time. Two main components. Um, it, it's basically a service that handles uh, flexibility and, ex and exception handling dynamically. Two main components, selection at, at runtime, it uh, will uh, substitute for a task a self-contained self worklet based on a rule set in the context of the current case. Uh, and the second component means it will uh, detect and handle uh, exceptions that may occur uh, at specification level or at the task level at runtime. Each of those two components uses an extensible uh, uh, repertoire of self-contained processes. Uh, selection uses a worklet, which is basically a your specification. Um, exception handling uh, uses a, a uh, process specification called an XLET, which basically uh, is a graphical language which describes how to handle particular exceptions when they occur. So it's suspending the task doing some compensation, restarting the task, uh, cancelling the case, whatever. And each of them use an extensible set of ripple down rules. Now, ripple down rules are very briefly are a set of uh, binary rules and they're basically of the, of the form if, uh, if, then, else, except. So as well as an else, there's an, ex there's an except clause. So do these things that's true, except if this other thing is true, and in this case you do the conclusion of that particular rule. So this is how the worklet service used to look like, or looked like, it had a, uh, the worklets themselves, like I said, the selection component, were created in a YAWL editor because a worklet is simply a YAWL specification, typically a small YAWL specification, which at runtime, as I said, is used to substitute for a particular task in a parent process. And off to the right we had our rules that were defined uh, by a, a rule editor, a rules editor. When I originally wrote the rules editor, I wrote it in, uh, in uh, .NET to demonstrate as part of my PhD that uh, languages, other languages could talk to uh, your, so you didn't have to write in Java, which, which seemed like a good idea at the time, but in retrospect, it was a pretty dumb way of doing things because it limited uh, the use the rules that are edited to, of course, Windows uh, Windows machines. Um, the so the usability issues of the old rules editor or of the current rules editor, in fact, is that it's platform dependent. It's going to be used on Windows unless you want to get into the monopath on, on Mac and stuff, but that doesn't really work that well. Um, it depends on other things being, uh, being available to it, logs and uh, um, outcomes of selection processes in the rule class and so on. There is some conceptual complexity insofar as I think it exposes too much of what ripple down rules are uh, than what needs to be known to actually add rules to the rule set. Um, and the functionality, of course, that worklets offer are uh, an optional extra in terms of workflow specification. You can, of course, uh, define a perfectly reasonable uh, worklet, worklet, workflow specification in your without having to do anything with worklets whatsoever, nat naturally. So functionality can be ignored, I guess. And because the rules editor it has its difficulties, it may have uh, limited the use of the worklet service. So what's happened to the worklet service is I've added a, uh, an API to the worklet service itself and intend to add a plugin to the new uh, URL editor which will replace the old rules editor and therefore it will be platform independent and will work directly with the specification and or task that we have selected in the uh, in the URL editor at the time. So it's more 
tightly, tightly uh, integrated with uh, designing a specification itself. So the, the API has two main functionalities, one which allows you to uh, create and maintain uh, rule sets and rule nodes within those sets. Um, and the second functionality is to provide uh, an event listener framework so that interested listeners, whether they be applications or other services, can listen for the events that occur in the workbook surface. So for example, when a uh, exception is, is detected or when a constraint is checked, an event will be triggered to any event listeners and they can do whatever they want to do with that event. Um, and it also opens up the capability of Ripple Geo rule sets so that as well as being able to support flexibility and exception handling in your specifications, it also allows you to access the workbook service to maintain a set of Ripple Geo rules for any other purpose. So through an API you can create and maintain a Ripple Geo rule set that's not used by your in any other way. But it gives you the functionality of uh, that, that is offered by, uh, Ripple, by Ripple Geo rules. Um, so there's methods uh, to get to get a, a node or a, or a tree, which is a set of nodes, or, a, or an, a, rule, a rule set, which is a set of trees, of which a, which contains a set of nodes. You can add uh, new rule nodes. Um, no, there's nothing there who allows you to delete a rule node because uh, Ripple Down rules function in such a way because of their exception clause, uh, rules are never taken out of, of the tree because to take a rule out of it, take a rule node out of the tree would upset the, uh, the um, evaluation of the tree. You simply uh, go around a, an old rule by adding an exception to it. You can evaluate a, um, a, a selected set against a data set and it will return the result of that evaluation if the rule is satisfied. So that's more useful in external applications or you can process, which is exactly the same thing, except if the rule is satisfied, then the appropriate exception is triggered and the appropriate han handle for that exception is then, in then invoked. Uh, rules can be expressed using a simple uh, rule expression language, using the normal numeric comparison logical operators. You can also embed uh, X queries into the rules that um, interrogate data values in, in tasks and net values and you can also define your own user, user, user defined functions that you're going to use in the uh, expression. Okay. So as I said the event listeners uh, just implement a Java interface and, and then allow those Java classes to listen for particular events that occur. So either an exception occurs and is, uh, it will detect all of the different sorts of exceptions that can occur in process at runtime, uh, or whether a selection event has occurred, or even uh, when the workbook service is shutting down, there's a Seagate event, which application may want to do their own shutdown uh, handling in a situation. As I've mentioned a couple of times previously, the replacement rules editor will be added um, to the next rule editor or offer platform independence. It'll be less complex because you don't actually have to know Ripple Down rules and you don't have to access uh, what happened in particular selection processes in the past to be able to add a rule. So that, that's a limitation of the, of the former rule editor. Uh, so it'll be less complex and um, as I said, it can be linked directly to whatever's going on in the editor at the time. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can do your entire rules management through the, the API and so the new rules editor will use that API rather than talk to the workbook service directly. Um, so there's more conceptual uh, overheads. Um, so hopefully from this users can now more easily integrate the workbook service into their own process, uh, projects. You can use the API to add rules that at runtime will be checked for exceptions or for selection uh, criteria. 
Um, you can also use rule sets for things other than your specification. Easy to add, manage and evaluate and process rules. Um, and it will take out a lot of that learning curve with the current rules that we have. Um, and service events um, sets up the idea of or the concept of allowing exception handling service chains where a service will handle an, an exception in a certain way and then pass the event on to another service who may want to do some other things to do with that exception handler and so on down the line. So you can have a number of handlers chained together that, that take care of particular parts of the exception. Um, that's it. Um, I think Arthur mentioned this paper this morning. Um, supporting blended workflows is an example, if you want to read that paper, an example of how the API has been used. Uh, so you can have a goal-based uh, workflow and a, and a uh, normal specification-based workflow and um, they work interchangeably through, through the use of this interface in the work itself. And, uh, and that's it for that. <laughs>